Gypsy Tales, story number four, Tropson. There once lived a poor man who had four sons. When the oldest was twenty-two and the youngest seventeen, all four left home to seek their fortunes. They had traveled only a day when they met a farmer who, in return for harvesting his crops, would let them have as much wheat as they could carry away in two wagons. These terms seemed reasonable enough, and after a month of hard work, the four brothers collected their wages. But since they had no use for so much wheat and were concerned with their aging father, they decided to make a gift of the wheat to him. They knew that the two wagon loads of cereal would not only see him through the winter, but would also afford him a little extra money whenever he sold some of it to his neighbors. Hence, having made their gift, they set off once again. When they had traveled for a week, they met a gentleman who asked them to work on his estate, offering each a horse in return for one year's labor. When the year was nearly up, Tropson, the youngest of the four brothers, went into the stable to take a look at the horses. There he saw many magnificent Arabians, Morgans, and Percherons, and one unusually small Shetland pony. As he passed the pony, a strange thing occurred. The animal looked at Tropson and spoke to him in a human voice. Tropson, it said, when you choose your horse, select me. Why should I do that? asked Tropson. I cannot tell you, replied the pony, but please believe me. When the day came for the brothers to make their selections, one chose a Morgan, another an Arabian, and another a Percheron. They laughed at Tropson and called him a fool when he chose the weak and worthless pony. As they rode away, the pony's gait was so slow that it could not keep up with the bigger horses. Thus, Tropson was left far behind. But as soon as they were all alone, the pony said, Tropson, let me go to the brook and drink some water. The lad dismounted and sat down by a tree, awaiting the animal's return. Within minutes, the animal was back, but somehow, the tiny pony had changed its form and was now a fierce and glorious Rowan stallion. Mount me, Tropson, commanded the stallion. I will, he replied as soon as I pick up the beautiful gold feather that is lying on the ground. Don't touch that feather, said the horse, for it will lead to nothing good. It is too beautiful to leave behind, replied Tropson, and he picked up the feather and put it in his shirt. Then they were off, and to Tropson's astonishment, the horse's hoofs did not even touch the ground. This wonderful animal could actually fly. Well, in less time than it takes to blink an eye, Tropson had overtaken his three brothers. Where did you find the stallion? they asked when they recognized their youngest brother. I met a man who wanted to trade this horse for my pony, replied Tropson. He must have been an even bigger fool than you are, Tropson, they laughed. The four brothers rode on together until they came to a magnificent castle. The king who owned the palace greeted the four lads and offered them employment. The oldest was made stable keeper. The next one was placed in charge of all the cattle. The third brother was appointed chief swineherd and Tropson was made the chief coachman. The three older brothers were very jealous of Tropson, for they felt that he had been given the easiest, the best, and the most dignified job. At night, when all four brothers were resting in a common bedroom, Tropson pulled the gold feather from his pocket, and to everyone's surprise, it glowed brilliantly in the darkness. As soon as Tropson fell asleep, the three brothers decided that not only would they tell the king of the unusual feather, but also would say that Tropson had boasted that he could capture the golden bird from whom the feather had been taken. After the king had heard the brother's tale, he ordered that Tropson be brought before him. I understand that you can capture the golden bird, said the lord. That I most certainly cannot do, your majesty, replied the lad, for I do not even know where the bird lives. Do not lie to me, Tropson, the king gravely replied. I order you to capture the bird, and, he warned, if you do not bring it to me by tomorrow night, I shall have you thrown into the dungeon. Tropson left with tears in his eyes and went to the stable where his magnificent stallion was eating oats. What is the matter, Tropson? the horse asked the lad. My dear friend, Tropson replied, I have been given an impossible assignment. The lord and the master of this castle has commanded me to bring the golden bird to him. If I fail in this task, I shall have to spend the rest of my life in the deepest dungeon. Didn't I tell you not to pick up the feather? asked the horse. But it is too late to worry about that now. Do exactly as I tell you, and with a little bit of luck, 
We will capture the golden bird. Jump on my back. Trapson did as he was told, and within a few minutes he found himself before a broken down hut. Inside this shaft there lives the old witch who is the owner of the golden bird. Although she may appear to be very friendly, do not trust her. She's actually very nasty and she'll try to harm you. There is only one way to get the bird. After she has greeted you, she'll walk over to the cage that contains the bird. The minute her back is turned, make a somersault and transform yourself into a flea. Then climb under her shawl and bite her on the shoulder. The itching will so infuriate her that she'll throw the shawl onto the floor and forget all about you for a couple of minutes. At precisely that instant, you must change yourself back into a man, grab the cage, and make your escape. I will be waiting for you, and we will be on our way before the witch realizes what has happened. Tropson followed these instructions, and everything worked out perfectly. While the witch was scratching herself furiously, Tropson escaped with the bird. Nearly five minutes elapsed before the old hag came to her senses and realized that she had been duped. When Tropson returned with the golden bird, his brother's faces turned red with rage. They decided upon a plan that they felt surely would lead to Tropson's downfall. A beautiful water princess lived at the bottom of the Danube River. Each Sunday, she rose to the surface of the river and then floated down it in a silver boat. Many a king and nobleman had tried to capture her then. However, when anything approached the boat, a whirlpool would suddenly form and suck the boat into the depths below, or smash it against the cliffs that lined the shores of the river. Early the next morning, the three brothers appeared before the king. My lord, said the eldest, Tropson claims that he can capture the water princess. Have him brought here immediately, replied the king. When Tropson heard what he was supposed to do this time, he became very sad. My lord, he said, I don't know who told you this story, but it is not true. As you know, no one can capture the Danube maiden. I don't believe you, replied the king. Did you not tell me the same thing about the golden bird? I expect you to capture the princess this Sunday. If you fail, I shall have her thrown into the deepest dungeon. What is the matter, Tropson? asked the stallion when Tropson entered the stable with his head bowed low. After the horse heard of the new task, he reassured his friend. Though this would be an impossible task for most creatures, we shall manage it. Now listen carefully. First of all, you must obtain a boat that is neither too large nor too small. On this boat, you must place a number of jugs containing milk and honey and wine. But into the wine, drop a few grains of sleeping potion. Then, by pushing the boat from behind, float it directly into the princess's path. When the princess sees that the boat is unoccupied, she'll go aboard and drink of the wine, the milk, and the honey. As soon as the drug takes effect, the princess will fall asleep. At precisely that moment, but not a second earlier, you must jump into the boat and row it as fast as you can to the west side of the Danube. I shall be waiting for you there, and before the princess awakens, we shall be back at the castle. Chopson did as he was told, and everything worked according to the plan. The king was delighted to meet the lovely maiden, but when he asked her to marry him, she made a strange request. The man I'll marry will have to bring my wild herd of horses to this castle. The king tried and tried, but didn't succeed in getting even near the horses. They stampeded whenever he came within half a mile of them. Why don't you try, Tropson? the king asked the lad. If you succeed, you shall not only marry the princess, but you'll also become the heir to my kingdom. Once again, the lad sought the stallion's advice. For once, we have an easy task, replied the horse. I shall bring the leader of the wild herd to the shore of the Danube, so that you can ride her back to the castle. But how about the rest of the herd? said Tropson. Do not worry, replied the horse. They'll all follow the great mare. Thus, Tropson and the stallion set off on their trip. When they reached the river's bank, Tropson dismounted and the stallion waded into the water. Within minutes, the great mare appeared and followed the stallion to the land. There, Tropson mounted the horse and in a gallop, he set out for the castle, followed by the entire herd. When the princess saw her horses arrive, she greeted Tropson and acclaimed him a great hero. Soon thereafter, a great wedding feast was celebrated which lasted for three days and three nights. Although his three brothers had wished only ill fortune on Tropson, he forgave them soon enough and appointed them to positions of great influence. On the evening after the wedding feast, Tropson wandered into the stable to speak to the stallion. I owe everything to you, he said. Just tell me what it is you wish, and it shall be granted to you. 
Everything is worked out well, replied the horse. Now I wish to be set free. There is nothing more that I can do here. If that is your desire, replied Tropson sadly, you may go whenever you please, but I shall miss you deeply. To be free is my only wish, replied the stallion. Tropson then unleashed the marvelous horse and walked with him to the castle's gate. Farewell, my friend, he shouted as the horse cantered off into the countryside. But just before the horse disappeared from view, Tropson saw a gypsy dressed in the splendid costume of the Bikovina tribe mount him and ride away. Tropson never saw the horse again. Many years later, however, when a group of gypsies had gathered by a campfire not far from the castle, he walked over to chat with them. When he asked about the horse, an old gypsy woman approached him. Perhaps I can tell you something, Lord Tropson. Perhaps I can, she said. Last night, a great honor was paid to our tribe. The king of all the gypsies visited us. When I approached him and helped him dismount from his magnificent stallion, he said, If you should see the Lord Tropson, tell him that a horse wishes him well. That is all he said, Master Tropson, and I did not understand what he meant. But perhaps you do. The light from the campfire flickered on Tropson, and all who were near could see the smile on his face. That is good news indeed, my dear woman, he said. Then he stood gazing into the fire, thinking of his beloved horse, and of all the magnificent adventures of the years gone by. End of story number four.